right? So here we go. Uh, so this is first month, and we have total paid for the car, if they ever ask. And I will actually write that down later on, what those letters stand for. You take your down, and you add total paid to the bank to that. And this is how it translates down plus payment times 12 times years. So basically, if you're like, what is TBD? Where did that come from, right? TPB, I mean, it's way up here already, right? It's the same, like that payment times 12 times years is what we call what you've paid the bank. Okay. What does TPC stand for? Stand for, right? Total paid for car. That's what that stands for. So if you if the questioner asks how much did you pay for this car in total, you take the down payment and what you've paid the bank. That's in total. This is first month. Okay, that lowercase i. This is total interest. And the, the top one, of course, is payment. All of this, this is basically a must have for loans. If you want to know how to work loans, you need this. So write this down and then I'll move over to fuel economy. I'll talk a little bit about fuel economy. Checking who is in here. Um, so I'm zooming over now, over to this side right here. Okay, so I'll try to stay in that area. Uh, fuel economy. The formula for this, you can always, you can bring that yellow formula sheet if you'd like, okay, to both tests on top of your study sheet. So the fuel economy is liters that you use for that specific trip, kilometers driven, times 100. And it will always be stated as liters per 100 kilometers right that's that's what you're basically that's how you would add what you would add to the number you calculate liters per 100 kilometers of travel So I'm going to give you an example here. Let's say you have a car that uses 9 liters per 100 kilometers, and that's obviously on average, right? I could ask you liters required. I'm just going to do that, okay? Required to travel. 300 kilometers. So let's say I'm asking, hey, how, how many liters would you need? If this is true, how many would you need for 300 kilometers? It's fairly simple to do in this case, but I, I would say you should always follow this step. Take the fuel economy. The fuel economy is a rate, right? It's telling you how many liters you need for 100 kilometers. 
and on the other side you put down the distance you wish to travel right so in this case it's 300 kilometers and so then x right it's it's a proportion uh, x is going to be your unknown so you, if you cross multiply and divide right you all you're really good at cross multiplying and dividing i must say that like i don't know maybe you had a good teacher before me that just did a very good job at that so way to go and so that would be 27 liters okay so you can use it to figure out how much would you need to make a long road trip let's say right nowadays with google maps it's so easy right you put all the air all the destinations in and it will tell you hey you're going to travel 2800 kilometers in total right you're like my car uses about nine liters per hundred kilometers let's do the math and now you can do the cost right cost of fuel right comma if fuel is what is it right now 399 i think one point uh, like i think it's 1399 per liter right now Right, so if you wanted the cost, you just take the liters times the dollar amount per liter. This is actually a formula, I'm gonna box that in. So the cost here would be, in this case, 27 liters times 1.399. So it's usually a two-step uh, scenario, right? You need to do this. And that is $37.77 to travel these 300 kilometers, right? If they give you a gas price, you need to figure out how many liters you would need. That's the only way to do it, right? Most of the time, this type of question is broken down into A and B. They'll ask you to figure out the liters, then they'll ask you to figure out the cost. Okay, so keep that in mind. We can use some of the precision measurement, right? It's not going to happen, right? So the, underneath this is precision measurement. I'm just going to scratch it and talk a little bit about leasing, okay? And then after that, you'll be, I'll ask you to work through the yellow booklet, okay? Specifically, So cross this. Aren't you happy, right? No precision measurement, even though you did well on it. Um, so leasing. Let me zoom into leasing here a little bit. Right there. Um, What did I want to say about this? Let me see. Oh yeah. Um, total lease cost or cost of lease, lease, right? You got to take your payment. Be very careful here with this. If it says that the payment is, is not taxed yet, then you would have to take you would have to add taxes to it, right? And then you multiply it by the number of months that we're, that we're dealing with, right? Plus any down payment that may have occurred. The down payment is not taxed. That's very important. I'll just do that, no tax. The down payment on a lease never is never taxed okay so you gotta understand that um, I'll just do this I 
only if payment is before tax. That is very important. Don't just go ahead and times everything by 1.12, right? It's only if the question says it's 250 plus tax or something that isn't is telling you that you need to add taxes. If it's saying 250 including taxes, do not do times 1.12, okay? Because that is that 250 already includes taxes. So you you basically omit that 1.12 step and just take your payment multiplied by the months. All right? So very important that you keep that in mind. Um, everything else is there. I tell you to, uh, if you go up to the bullets, I tell you to uh, review depreciation. You will see that in the yellow booklet today. Um, use private sale versus selling with the dealer. There was a formula for that in the in the notes. You want the formula again or what? I think you should all have that on your study sheet. Okay. Um, maybe I will just say this. Don't don't do this. Like find the taxes, the PST, then find the five percent for the GST. You do everything beautifully, and then at the end you go, oh, and just in case, times one point twelve. Don't do that. You're double taxing. You, you. It's it, then it's wrong, right? So don't do that, especially if it's a private sale. Make sure you don't mix that up. If you're buying a vehicle and there's a trade-in, make sure you subtract the trade-in before you add taxes, right? I hope I'm just talking to myself. You already know this, right? I'm just reviewing it for myself so I know how to market, right? So just make sure trade-in, take it off before taxes are added. And when it's at a dealer, it doesn't matter if it's used or new, it's always 12%. Always. Have a little bit of uh, pros and cons of leasing, okay? So maybe I'll do that here. Uh, lease versus finance. So if you, because both of them involve monthly payments. What's the, what's the advantage here, right? The pros for this and the pros of financing. And if I give you the pros, you should know what cons are, right? The pros of leasing is lower monthly payment. Guarantee, because when you're financing, you're, you're paying for the entire vehicle. When you're leasing, you're only paying for like the two years that you're gonna drive it for, right? So it's not as, as if you compare that same car, you wanna buy it brand new or lease it brand new, leasing would always be lower. The pros of financing, you can customize it. And I want you to add something to it when I ask you to do these types of questions. Don't just say customize. I'm doing this to just to give you a little bit of a hint, right? You can add you can add a lift kit. You can add um, LED lights, right? You can add a muffler, da, 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 yeah, right? A spoiler, whatever. You can do whatever you want. You can customize it because it's technically yours. Um, pros of financing: you can trade it in. Can be used as a trade in. Right? If you want to get a new one, take it to the dealer. They'll give you some for it. You can sell it and then go buy a new one, whatever you want. But you have that. Uh, the pros for leasing would be... Uh, what was another one? Always drive a new car. You always drive... A new car and that's saying basically what I'm saying is if you were to lease if that's what you're gonna go for uh, every time you you always drive a new car versus financing you keep that car and it's yours right you don't keep on getting a new one and so forth you also need to have new versus used right so I'm just gonna talk about the pros here we did in the booklet, you have everything. 
The pros of new would be lower maintenance, uh, safer. I'm just going to do two there. Pro of used, it is uh, cheaper to insure. Oops, sorry. Can't see that because I'm zoomed in. There you go. Pro of use is cheaper to insure and uh, only pay PST if bought privately. You need to make sure you say that. If bought privately. All right, at this point, you grab your yellow booklet and you go to, it's just after probability on page 15. Um, and when you're done that, go to the green one and you find vehicle finance in there and keep going. I hope you did the probability in there. The key is posted. So let's go. If you do bare minimum today, you should be able to get the yellow one done. If you're on task, you should probably be able to start the green one as well. And so the last 20 minutes or so, I will take over and just quickly highlight a few things. But until then, so the first one asked you to figure out, calculate, the value of the vehicle after two years, right? So you and they're telling us that the value depreciates at 25% per year. I'm just gonna add this. Don't add taxes to this type of question, okay? So you find out 25% year one, right? You subtract it. Then you have your starting amount at year two. You multiply that by 0.25. So, so far you've lost this much, right? So I just went ahead and took that, subtracted it one more time, and then that's what you're left with, right? 19,125, that's it. So if you're following along, just quickly write down the final answer. It'll be on the video, right? So if you need to write it down, uh, I just wanna get it done before 320 because most of us are gonna be leaving. Then there's the fuel economy question, which we basically just did, right? So uh, this is our fuel economy. You should recognize that immediately. Uh, then it's saying that we're going to drive a distance of 258 kilometers. I always set up my fuel economy first. And then I say X number of liters over 258 kilometers. Cross, multiply, and divide, you end up needing this many kilometers to make that trip. So for B, the cost, I take the liters I require, I multiply it by 1.19, right? And so it's going to cost you $36.84 to travel. Okay, hopefully this makes sense, hopefully. And here, watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to flip it a little bit. Uh, I do both, right? So in this case, they want to justify why you would want to finance instead of leasing. And I just said that financing allows you to eventually own the vehicle. You can modify it. You can sell it anytime. There's no mileage charge. Remember that leasing may have a, a mileage restriction. And so I went right under it. I went advantages of leasing, lower monthly payments, no hassle returns. So I did, I did a little bit of both there just in case the question flips it on you. Hmm. Next, we had, this is a parts and labor question. So you add up your parts 
you add up your hours. So I, I write down my parts here. And to figure out the labor cost, you got to add up your hours. In this case, it's two, two times $85 per hour. We were told that at the beginning. So the labor turns out to be 170. You add them up. And because it says after tax, right? We need to add 12% to it. That's 929.60. Pop quiz, what do you do if it says taxes only? If it says, how much should you pay in taxes alone? Right, so we would turn this into a zero. That's as easy as that, okay? So watch, read carefully. I will use the wording that the booklet is using, that you can be guaranteed. And they will look like, you're like, oh yeah, I've seen this one, I know what the answer is. Don't even go there, you're gonna make a mistake, I can tell you already. Uh, then there's the use private. We were told it's a private sale. 5,000 is the price, but the book value is 5,500. And there's a safety. Total, find a total after tax. So I take, the, this is the formula, by, by the way. Remember Lien search, Lien does not get taxed, remember? So price plus book or price, the bigger of the two. And then safety times 1.05, parts times 1.12 plus Lien. In this case, there was only safety, so we kind of omit the parts and the Lien. It ends up being 5,432.25. Okay. Question 19. We traded it in, right? We take off the trade in times 1.12. Your answer is 23,374.40. For that particular question. Last uh, last two questions here. You need to have some insurance uh, knowledge. Maybe go back. If you're only driving twice a month, pleasure is the best one because you can still drive a little bit, but not every day. Okay. All purpose would not be a good one because you would pay more. Layup is when you park it and no insurance. It works back where I come from, but not here. Paraguay, most people did not have insurance. Um, total lease, there were taxes already included, so you just go 349 times 48, that's the number of months, plus 2,000, no taxes on that either, 18,752. And the green one starts nice and easy if you know, if you have a study sheet. Two disadvantages of leasing. What's one disadvantage? Yeah, Jackie. You can't customize it, all right. Anybody else? What's the big downside of leasing? Kilometers. There's a limit on kilometers, right? Boom, you're done. Two marks, move on, right? It takes you maybe half a minute to do this one, but it does add up because you, if you have six, six marks in total where you just have to list something, it can cost you 20%, right? So you don't want to miss out on that. Anyways, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Have a good one, guys. Uh, wait for the bell.